Remote Trap here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my new toy, which is a Creality laser engraver. So this is the 40 watt model. It's uh, the Falcon 2, and um, Creality contacted me asking if uh, I wanted to review one of their laser engraver machines, uh, which obviously I did. So I'm just going to be running through the setup of it, show you uh, how simple and easy it is to use and also show you some of the stuff I've been able to make uh, within the first few hours of getting this thing set up. I've never been a very like computer based uh, type person, I'm more of a manual tools kind of guy. So stuff like this has always scared me a little bit when I got my uh, plasma table. I genuinely didn't think I would be able to get my head around actually using it and um, the thing with this stuff is is the software is so simple and easy to use that even if you are that way I can pretty much guarantee that you'll be able to work it out because if I if I'm able to do it then you'll be able to do it. So just to run through some of the functions on the machine got an emergency stop button, you can actually lock it um, with a little key to prevent anyone from being able to turn it on if you don't want them using it. So you've got the option to uh, move the laser around to get it where you want it and then you can home it and it's got uh, limit switches in here so it knows exactly where the laser is and then it works out everything from its home position. So you've got these three lights. The first one is monitoring the air supply so this will tell you if you've got the uh, correct air from your air assist pump. You've got a fire light to tell you if what you're cutting, the wood or anything, has actually caught fire. And then this is monitoring the lens. So if the lens gets uh, dirty from the soot and smoke and stuff this will change colour, it will go to orange and then it will eventually start flashing red and that will tell you that you need to clean the lens. You've got a manual air adjust on the side of here. So you can see as I turn the air down, it's getting to a low point, it's going to orange. If I turn the air completely off, it starts to flash red to tell me there's no air assist. And uh, that's how all those uh, monitoring lights work. On the top we've got normal and precise mode so this is a 40 watt laser and you can run it in a precise mode which will basically give you a finer cut so if you're cutting something with um, very tight tolerances or very small gaps and it needs to be really accurate you can set this to precise by just holding this down that's now on precise mode so that will cut a finer line when it does the cut line so if you're making something that you want to fit together that will be a tighter fit or if you're trying to achieve two lines that are very close together you can use that and it will uh, basically just give you a higher level of accuracy on the cut. And this is the air assist pump which is uh, all controlled through light burn so you can actually adjust the control of the air assist on light burn um, as well as manually on the machine there. It comes fully assembled in the box, you don't have to bolt any of it together, you literally just put the feet on it. The laser itself is, is adjustable height, so you, you slot this in. Which you've got the ability to load your design straight onto a card, and put the card in the machine, and then set the machine to go from this, so you don't actually have to have a laptop connected. I've just left the laptop connected, that's just the way I, I would prefer to do it. First thing you're going to need to do is install Lightburn. There are other ones that you can um, use, but after doing a bit of research, Lightburn was uh, apparently the one to go with. So I got a 30 day free trial of Lightburn, and uh, so far I've found it's really easy to use. And uh, once my 30 day trial is up, then I'll um, I'll probably end up just paying for this software. Uh, I don't think it's expensive, but there are free ones um, if you don't want to pay. 
So the first thing you need to do is uh, set yourself up to engrave some of these grids, which will give you your, uh, your depth of engraving for the material that you're trying to cut. So. And then you've got another grid for actually cutting through one for engraving, which is called fill, because you're, uh, you're filling, you know, the little squares. And then these are cut lines. So this gives you, it's basically setting your, um, your speed and your power of the laser to create the depth of engraving you want or the cut that you want. So you can engrave all different types of materials with this. You can do wood, plastic, leather, um, cardboard, metals. This is uh, stainless steel. So you can see I'm able to engrave a range of different colors. So I didn't do the full range on this, but you can see I was able to get from black to blue to red. So once I had engraved some of my test pieces, I started messing around with um, making some things. So the first, first thing I did obviously was I got my, got my logo in there. This is on some two mil ply. And on this I had the, the laser set to its full speed and then adjusted the power down to get the depth I want to speed up the cutting process of this. And what it does is, you probably can't see in the uh, video, but the outsides of this are cut deeper than the inside. So it's much lighter on the inside. And what's happening is when you've got the laser, when you've got the laser set at its higher speeds, as it comes to a stop, it slows down before it then picks up and goes the other way and then speeds back up across the middle. And it's not adjusting the power of the laser as it's slowing. So you end up cutting deep on each side of the, of whatever it is you're cutting. So you can probably see it a bit more on this one. It's really deep there, pretty shallow in the middle. So I was doing that to, to try and speed up the process of how long these things take to cut because it is quite a slow process otherwise. So then what I did was I went the other way. I slowed the, slowed the travel of the laser down and this is the result of that. This is on some thicker ply. This is five mil ply. You can see it's got a much uh, more even cut all the way around. The coloring is the same and it's, it's a much nicer result. So that's definitely the way to go with that took about two hours to cut that. About two hours to cut that. This is a tea coaster, five mil ply. Uh, again, cut with the laser nice and slow so you get a nice a nice consistent engraving, about 25 minutes to cut that. So just over an hour to cut four of those. So then I started uh, making some key rings for all the companies that have, that have helped out um, and that sponsored my Time Attack event. And you can see that the difference, the difference from when I started with like my initial settings to after playing around and uh, using the slower laser settings. Um, and the difference is, I think that took about six minutes to cut that one. And that took like two minutes to cut that one. But you can see the, uh, clearly see the difference there. So I've done, that was obviously with the laser going really fast and nowhere near enough power. That cut really quick, I think it was about a minute. Again, that was that one was probably about five minutes, and it's so uh, it's so quick and easy to get the designs into the 
software and then create a, a key ring that these are really, really uh, easy to make. You probably have a little business just making key rings, I would imagine. This is one I, rather than engraved, I actually cut, cut all the letters out. You can see the sort of precision you can achieve with it. This is my favorite one I did. Toyo Tires one, I drew the R888 tread pattern into it, which I thought was cool. So I've just done some fine engraving. You can see that the, uh, the precise is just a bit clear and it hasn't sort of blown through the edge of the um, numbers and letters into the next one, where it's just a finer laser beam. So moving on to the stainless steel. So it won't cut out the stainless steel, but it will engrave it. So that's the results I got for stainless steel. The stainless I had was quite dirty and old, so apparently you get much better results if you use a clean new piece of stainless. So then I decided to go have a go at engraving a leather wallet, which uh, came out really good actually. So I'm really happy with the, the wallet and uh, all the little bits I've made actually, but I'm gonna do a few of these wallets to sell. So uh, they'll be up to sell on my eBay shop. Uh, next up, I wanted to have a go at cutting out some pieces that would, uh, you know, slot together to make something. So I decided to go for an Archfab dice kit, which I adapted a little bit so that it would clip together and then we could just glue it together.
So that's basically everything I've, I've got done with the laser engraver so far. I've been really impressed with it. It's gonna be a really handy little tool to have in the workshop. I've also got a enclosure cover for it um, with a little extraction system that sucks away the smoke. I'm gonna have this set up at home, so I'll be putting all that on it uh, when I get it set up at home in the shed. There wasn't really any point, I didn't think, in having the extraction system set up here when I've got everything else making loads of smoke anyway. So I will uh, update you with some more stuff on this once I get it set up at home and I'll show you the enclosure then. But uh, thanks again to Creality for letting me try out one of these. And um, all the details to it are in the description. So if you're interested in uh, getting yourself one, then um, go and check it out. It's going to be it for this one. Just watch him. See you on the next one.